Hello everyone and welcome to the review on the battle damage version of the armoured Batman from Batman vs Superman 1 6 scale figure by Hot Toys. Here is the new version over here, battle damage with the kryptonite spear. And for comparison here is the original release, that was more of a clean version. There was also a black chrome version, which I don't have in the collection, I just never really um, felt the urge to buy that one. I have seen a lot of pictures and a lot of videos, just doesn't really do it for me, I'm going to stick with this one main reason I was tempted to get this one wasn't anything to do with the battle damage really, I just wanted the spear uh, all along and I wish this version had come with one as well, but that's how they get you, that's how they do it, so um, it's not the most honourable technique, but it's certainly, uh, you know, it leaves you in a bit of a sticky position if you want the full armoured Batman experience, you're gonna need that spear, people did make their own and sold them, uh, I never got one myself but they did look just as good as this. So, let's do a little comparison, let's review this guy, see how it's all looking. There are quite a few differences, and I'll get into them now. So the first thing I noticed that is different, uh, both head sculpts have not got the batteries in them right now, so their eyes are not lighting up, that's just how they look when the eyes are off. But there is a slightly different, a much more white looking eye there, to make it look like it's on at all times. There's really no need to put the battery in for me, which I'm not going to be messing around with. I'm sure another review out there will show you what it looks like with the eyes lit up. I won't be putting batteries in the spear either. I've already tried to be honest and it was a nightmare. Couldn't get the damn thing to switch on. Tried all kinds of different combinations of switching the batteries over the other way and just all kinds of stuff. Just couldn't get the damn thing to light up. But it looks um, nice and bright when it's off anyway. I mean, some people just assume that, they, uh, that the thing's lit up already, but it's not. It's just really bright. So that's how that eye looks. And these ones, very nice, but not quite as white. I think I actually prefer the way these ones look, in comparison. This one's definitely more white. The other difference is, uh, this one doesn't have the strap going across the chest. But this one does, I believe that's meant to be the strap that his grenade launcher there is attached to. And that's meant to be sort of behind his back here. But this one has the strap. And this one does not have one, but he sure does have some battle damage. So you can see there, Superman has given him a bit of a roughing up. It's pretty decent. Over here you've got some little scratches, but nothing too major. And took the mouth plates out, just wanted to have this on display like a suit of armour that hasn't been worn yet does tempt me very much to get a Bruce Wayne put together that I could have just standing there facing this just kind of contemplatively just looking at his armor thinking you know like how am I going to do this how am I going to take on the Man of Steel I'm going to have to become steel myself <laughs> there is his uh, mouth plates that's the one you get with the figure there is another one you get with the figure but this is a custom one here that I got from um, 1-6 kit just a regular mouth plate just so you could have him in the classic looking up at the bat signal in the sky waiting for Superman to turn up but that does look pretty sweet as just a suit of armor standing there. Right, so the other difference is the gold. This belt is very gold, nicely weathered as well. But whereas this one isn't gold at all, really. But I have checked the film, and it doesn't seem to be as gold as it is on this figure. I'd say color-wise, that's the more accurate one. And also, check out the, uh, the gauntlet fins. They're really gold on this one as well. Whereas on the original, a hint of gold in there, but not much. And I have checked the film, as I said, I checked the fight scene, watched it carefully. Couldn't really see much gold action going on. Maybe if you check like pictures from events in uh, real life where they've got the actual suit behind glass, maybe they look a bit more gold there. But yeah, paint wise, there is a bit of a difference. He's got more gold coming off the uh, side of the boot there. Again, the original, a hint of gold, but it's definitely more of a kind of silver. And this cape has a really nice kind of muddy water effect, kind of just going all around it. It also is quite ripped in places, which is pretty decent. Very shredded on this side. Look at that, that looks cool. Yeah, they did some nice work on this. 
Seems like the same kind of material they used the first time around. Just more weathered up. So yeah, your original. Battle damage. Yeah, I definitely prefer the way that looks. Get a quick look at his accessories. We have hands. Various different poses for the hands. They're nicely done, same as the first time round. A grenade launcher. A couple of uh, grenades that are just kind of loose at the moment. There you go. And his uh, kind of line launcher or grapple gun. The thing he used to lower himself down once he dropped Superman down onto all those radiators. It was harsh, man. And also just notice that his bow fires are showing in the uh, battle damage head sculpt here in the movie. That's something Hot Toys could have done. Can you swap the heads around? Probably. Let's give it a try. <sighs> God damn it. Well, that was um, not fun. Now, I apologize in advance if I'm wrong about this, but I have tried to swap the heads around and get them to click down onto the joints. They won't do it. Um, this head is just super loose, it's not on there, it's not clicking into the, the ball joint. I think they are slightly, maybe different sizes. That's how big that one is. That does look a bit smaller, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. That one's bigger. And that one's smaller. So, when I try to put the battle damage head on here, I've, re I've, you know, I've taken him off the stand, I've used both hands in between filming. I've really tried to press down hard and it just won't go on. So that can sort of rest there like that, but it's never, exactly. See, that's that's gonna fuck happen. <sighs> Sounds a bit. Yeah, good one, Hot Toys. That's a really freaking clever idea. So yeah, you can just leave the head resting on the body, but it won't click into place. And if someone manages to do that later on, it makes me look like an idiot, then fair enough, but that just won't go on there. So that's really, Stupid! Sorry, I'm just picking up something that dropped. So there you go. That's uh, what the heads look like swapped around, but apparently you're not meant to do that for some reason. Absolutely friggin' I want to swear like crazy. I think you know how I feel. Why wouldn't that go on there? I mean, why wouldn't you think about that? And they obviously have thought about it, and they've obviously made that decision. Why? Stupid. Alright, so I haven't done the greatest job of setting this up like in the movie where he's about to kill Superman, but I wanted to make a point about something. Uh, in the unboxing, you'll remember if you've seen it, that I mentioned there is something in particular about this figure that really bugs me and frustrates me, and it always will. And I'll tell you what it is. A lot of you probably already guessed what that is already, but it's a pretty obvious thing. It's the expression on the Bruce Wayne sculpt that's underneath the Battle Damage mask. It's just dead. He's just staring straight ahead of him. He looks like he's daydreaming and this is all based around the scene where he is about to end Superman's life. And look at him. He's off daydreaming somewhere. He doesn't look at all angry. Um, and the thing with it is, if Hot Toys had have took a little bit of artistic license with this, it's so frustrating because look how close these two bits are to touching each other. And if they met, you could have had interchangeable mouth plates and you would have been able to interchange it with this and have him raising up the spear about to kill Superman with that mouth plate, uh, mouth plate in there. Let me just see what that would look like. See? But no, he's uh, just totally neutral, daydreaming, looking off into space. It's just really annoying. And uh, considering... The scene it's from, he just looks really bored. So that's it. There's me problem with the figure. Everything else, the articulation's been fixed. I like it. The paint apps are really good. I don't really know what's going on with this intense gold that's going on. I did check the film, like I said, and it's not really there. However, it might be on the actual suit in museums when you see it standing there in like really bright light, like I've got this lit up now. But yeah, that's my main source of frustration. If they had have just joint those two little sections under the eye to make a separate piece, interchangeable mouth plates, giving you two different mouths, one open, screaming with the teeth showing, just like in the film, and this one. Yeah, just really dead expression. 
just doesn't work. Poor choice by the artists involved. I just, you know, they all got to sit around a table and decide what their best course of action is. And that's what they decided. And it makes you wonder, it really does. Who's hiring these guys, huh? There you go. I don't think he's going to kill him, to be honest. I think Superman could pretty much just sneak away right now. And uh, Batman wouldn't even notice. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go here. Yeah? <laughs> just trying out another little pose. Batman holding him down with his feet, raising that spear up nice and high. He's going for the no look stab because he can't look anywhere near the direction that Superman's actually doing right now. He's down there thinking, is he even paying any attention? Nope, he ain't paying any attention. He's looking off somewhere else. He tried to get him to look down, but he won't. He can make him look up. He's really... Well, hey! Poe's ability is pretty damn good, though. I mean, there's no denying that. He's really about to launch that thing javelin style. I mean, just some good movement in his legs. He's got good balance. He can uh, pretty much do all the kind of speary kind of poses that I'm coming up with. I mean, obviously, you can tweak it, do what you need to do. Yeah, posability has been fixed. I mean, that seems to be where they probably spent most of their time with this thing. I don't know if it's a new body, or there's just more material, more give in the suit to allow for things like this. Maybe uh, this suit was just sort of too tightly fitted. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look baggy or anything, but he can certainly move his legs and definitely his arms. So much better now. So yeah, posability, for considering how bulky he is, you know, and the suit he's wearing, posability, I'd give a 9 out of 10. Really, really good. Now that's a pretty cool pose for him. Getting him kind of look like he's cracking his knuckles. Tough guy pose. Just standing there looking mean. Definitely would look sick in a detolf beside your regular suit Batman or your nightmare Batman. That is a pretty sweet one. I think we're looking at the thumbnail there, guys. I think that's what it's going to be. It does look awesome. Let's just make him look bigger by hitting it from underneath. Look at that. Epic. See, for a pose like that, the facial expression of Bruce Wayne underneath the mask works perfectly. It's just if you're trying to display him to look like he's about to take out Superman with that spear, He's going to look very bored and very daydreamy, but here it works. So I tell you, right now I'm thinking about forgiving that expression because it's working so well for this particular pose. Look at that. Respect it. Sorry, I just had to hit this pose one more time with the light catching his eye this time. Just makes him look that much more real. Look at that. Beast mode. You'll notice uh, Superman's not around anymore. It's because I put him in this pose. Just flew away. Don't blame him. Looks pissed. Just gonna let you guys get a look at the instruction manual. You can pause it and read that section if you want to. Pause that, read it if you want to. And pause that and read it if you want to. There we go. What's this? All the armor parts on the body are non-detachable. Don't try to take them off, otherwise the figure will be damaged. Uh, yes. On the other side, we have little bits of information there. Pause and read. And yeah, just some instructions on how much you're supposed to bend. Well, I've bent them a lot more than that. Hmm. And I've opened his legs more than that as well. But no harm came to the figure. But I would follow the instructions they give you. It is my job, after all, to push them to the limits to see what they can do so you are better informed by the time you get yours. You know what's what. Just taking a look at that same pose from the side slightly. Looks pretty decent. It's certainly a nice looking piece, man. I mean, for the people out there who missed out on this version, it's see, I mean, 
doesn't that just look sick honestly without the mouth plate in just standing there like a suit of armor that hasn't you know gone into battle with superman yet i think it does look awesome then again so does that hmm tough call if you're only gonna get one still just testing out the posability on the arms trying to get him to do a bit of a muscle man you know showing us his muscles but then I changed it into kind of a kung fu coming at you kind of pose instead but look at that pretty good arm movement and uh, you could leave them like this this suit that they use for the regular suit and this one pretty tough material and he is battle damaged anyway so if you end up with a few little wrinkles here and there that ain't no bad thing it just adds to it I reckon you're safe I reckon uh, you'd be able to put this guy in some pretty cool fight poses Certainly capable of it. The legs move really good, the arms move really good. Not too sure if he can turn his torso, we'll try that next. No guys, there's not much articulation in his waist, not much turning ability, but you know, that's kind of down to the design of this suit. I mean, once I tried to turn him, this went crazy, so I have to put that back in a minute. But no, all the possibility is uh, pretty good in the neck, great in the arms, shoulders, elbows, the uh, top of the thigh there, the knees, the ankles are really good too. Great posability, just not in the torso waist area. Yeah, you've got some pretty sweet leg articulation and balance with this guy. Look at that, he looks really mean, just got him kind of hulking, leaning forward, and the uh, knee bent as well. Pretty good balance. Loving the uh, kind of muddy splash of water on the cape as well. It's definitely an impressive piece, just like the first one. Again, comes down to whether you want a clean look out of this one, or do you want the battle damage with much better posability? I don't know. No contest, really. I mean, you want to be able to move the thing. That's the whole point of it being a one-six scale figure. But then again, my eye keep does you know it does keep going to this, thinking how cool that looks. But yeah. Anyway, good leg articulation. Looks good. Now I just want to do a little height comparison between these two versions. They're both not standing on a base, standing up straight, legs straight, everything is straight. Now just pan back so you can just see for yourself. It would appear that the new version is slightly, slightly taller than the last one. Let me just come in here. See, I notice it when I look at the belt where that's sitting compared to this one. It is slightly above that one. The shoulders, like look at the um, the top bit there. I don't know why the camera is trying to focus on the boxes in the background and not the things in front of it, you absolute piece of sh <laughs> Okay, there we go. But to my eye, it looks like the battle damage version is slightly taller. Just slightly, which is odd. But there you go could just be maybe my armor's bunched up a little bit from posing him but it does seem even the sort of top of the actual suit underneath see a little bit of his shoulder there even that looks slightly higher up than this one so yeah inconsistent same height comparison but turn them to the side facing each other it would appear that the battle damage is indeed slightly taller and you may find yourselves asking why. It's the same person in the same suit from the same film. And they're different sizes. Okay. The heads don't interchange. They're different sizes. One has bright gold paint apps to parts of the armor. The other one has more movie accurate. I don't know. Psh, what are they doing? Are they doing it on purpose? Is it some kind of big trick to make you buy more stuff? Probably that many people all working on projects of talent like that they can't be that dumb something's amiss all right let's get a really good look at the paint app on the ben affleck sculpt underneath here and let me just focus and turn down that contrast there you go um i mean they always get the mouth plates really good on these batman figures when it comes to the actors the actor's likeness 
Um, as far as that eye goes, eh, it's not really screaming Ben Affleck at me, but then again, the LED torch on the camera is shining right in his face. And it's not very flattering for any figure when a camera's doing that. So I just don't want you to miss any of the details. We'll try it without the torch, I think, because he's looking a bit sweaty and a bit washed out. And I don't like it. So we turn off the torch, we come back, yes? Alright, so I turned off the torch. Yeah, it does help. It does look a bit more like Ben now. Yeah, it's a good head sculpt. They never showed us uh, Ben Affleck without the helmet on in this particular suit, so it's not really something we can uh, complain about with that one. However, in the movie, um, especially when he's you know about to take out Superman, this eyepiece is missing as well, and you can see both his human eyes in the mask. So I don't know how they would have achieved that, but it would have been nice. Yeah, definitely great paint app, good stubble effect like usual. Uh, where's that mole? Is it there? Let me just, let me just uh, focus a little bit. Yeah, the mole is there. It's very, very slight though. They've been very kind to him on that one. Hot Toys do that sometimes. They're very kind when it comes to hairlines and moles. I've noticed that. Anyway, yeah, it's nice. Nothing really to complain about. Good job, JC. He looks up pretty well. Looks down, not too bad neither. He's got some good neck articulation. He looks particularly good when he's looking down like that. You gotta love this suit, man. I, I get kind of distracted by other figures and I don't really pay much attention to him on and off, but every now and then he'll catch my eye and just with a little tweak, you can just... Uh, a whole new vibe from him. More of a hero vibe, save the day when he's looking up. More of a I am gonna kick your ass vibe when you turn the head down. I like it. So my final thoughts are thoughts of confusion really. I, I don't understand the incredible difference in color between the belt and the gauntlet fins and the boot fins between these two night and day from the same film, same scene basically. I don't get it. I don't know why one is slightly taller from the other. They're both the same person from the same film, from basically the same scene. Yet one is slightly taller than the other. Interesting. And it bothers me that that's the only option we get. And it just, it frustrates me, like I said before, if these two little black bits met, if they touched each other, you would have been able to interchange different mouth plates and it would have just been Super fun and very satisfying, but instead we're stuck with a, an expression that works for a look like that. Just standing there looking like tough guy Batman, that looks fantastic. But if you put the spear in his hand, raise the arm up, put Superman at his feet and try to have a display like that, which you could do with this figure because he can do it and you can leave him like that. And I don't think you'd have any problems with damage to the suit. What's the point when he looks that bored and disinterested in what he's doing? But those things aside, it is an incredible looking piece and I would not say don't get it and I've got no reason to tell you to get it. I don't get anything for free when it comes to these things. I have to spend a fair bit of money to get them early. So I've got no reason to um, you know, tell you that it's fantastic if it's not. But it is a very impressive figure. Great posability, they really fixed that. So all in all, if you want to get this one and you do have that one already, I'd say go ahead and do it because then you can always do what I did and take that mouth plate out and have him just standing there as a suit of armor. Maybe one day kit bash yourself a Bruce Wayne. Maybe Hot Toys would do the Bruce Wayne in that kind of blue suit from uh, I think it's the beginning of the film. I would be very tempted to have a Bruce Wayne standing beside this suit of armor. I think it would look very cool. So yeah, final thoughts are it is a very, very good figure. Great posability, looks fantastic. Very chunky, good balance. Nice box as usual, and yeah. I'm not really a scoring guy, I just tell you what I think of him, but you know, if I was going to score him, I'd give him an 8 out of 10, maybe 8.5 out of 10. Very good piece. The spear, couldn't get it to light up, don't know what's going on with that, but it looks um, quite lit up anyway, even when it's just off. I mean, it's off at the moment, but it looks like it's on. So, And the light up eye thing, not really any point to it, because it's nice and bright anyway. So I wouldn't go messing around with the batteries unless you really want to display it lit up. So, there you go. Both very good figures. The posability on him was terrible. 
but he does look awesome. Posability on him, much better, and looks awesome. So, it's up to you guys. Get him if you want. If you do, you won't be disappointed. If you do decide to pass on him, you might regret it. Uh, you might regret it later on because, you know, it is a very, very cool piece. All right, it's Halloween tomorrow, and I do have to work. Unfortunately, I was planning to do some kind of Halloween special. Um, I was expecting the Silent Surfer Myers head to turn up for Halloween, but that hasn't happened. So I'm working anyway, so no big deal. But I'll watch some horror movies and get in the mood. Try and bring you guys a little Halloween special in some form or another. But thanks for watching. I'll bring you some more videos on this guy. I probably want to do some stuff that I haven't done in this review once it comes to me. Show him with some other characters and stuff. A very nice piece. If you're tempted, go ahead and get him. He's awesome. I'll see you later. Bye bye.